Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Dwight Peters from QuarterWaters.com, the site for young entrepreneurs. Today on the program, I have with us one of the co-founders of B Condoms, the first black-owned condom company. His name is Elker Bala. Elker, welcome to the program, man. Thanks for having me. Ah, man, so... You know, I stumbled across what you guys have been doing with beat condoms, and I was really, really impressed with the idea. But more importantly, with 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 what y'all are trying to accomplish and how y'all started. So start off by telling us exactly what is beat condoms. Sure, um, beat condoms is uh, it's, it's it's really more of a movement. Uh, it's not just a condom company or, or a condom line. Um, we started beat condoms um, to combat and change the trajectory of HIV and AIDS and other STIs uh, in the most at-risk uh, populations. Um, and, you know, they happen to be the African-American community, uh, the Latino community. Um, you have the gay and bisexual male community, and then also the, the newest community, which is the 50 years and over uh, population. Um, so those are you know, the, the, the main target groups that that have that the most at-risk um, within HIV and AIDS, and we started um, the company. I'll give you a little bit of a background. It's three co-founders, so it's uh, Jason Panda, um, uh, Ashanti Johnson, and myself, Al Kevala. All of us were um, friends from undergrad. We all attended uh, Morehouse College in Atlanta. Morehouse. We all left and did. Yeah, that's right, Morehouse man. We all left and did um, various careers. Uh, I started off here in New York City doing investment banking um, and other financial. Uh, Professions uh, over my over the past eight nine years, uh, Jason was a corporate uh, attorney. After he left Morehouse, I uh, lived in Brazil for a little while, and then ended up going to D.C. to Georgetown Law School, uh, and then started uh, practicing patent uh, patent law, uh, biopharmaceutical patent law, to be specific. And then Ashanti Johnson, um, also a Morehouse graduate, was uh, left to go do pharmaceutical sales and medical. Degree device uh, sales. So we all had three different uh, distinct um, backgrounds, but we're all friends. All of us have always been very involved in community um, um, community partnerships and, and, and events. A lot of us a lot of us are involved in mentoring, you know, young men, usually young men of color, a lot of Morehouse um, prospective students uh, and, and the sort. Um, so the idea kind of, the idea actually came from our other co-founder, Jason Panda, and his mother, to be specific, actually. Um, her background was in, she used to run a transitional care and detox facility in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, and uh, Jason, obviously being a good friend of mine, he's a miserable attorney, <laughs> and uh, just wanted to kind of do something different. So when he was having a conversation with his mother, we were talking about the time where she started her transitional care um, and detox facility, and it was really during the late 70s and early 80s during the crack epidemic, and that's kind of what hit hard um, within the community at the time, yeah. um, and that was kind of her, her call to action. So, you know, we were speaking about what's happening now, and it really was the problem with the trajectory of HIV and AIDS in the, um, in the African-American community, although overall um, incidence rates are going down, the, again, the trajectory within the community was heading towards the wrong way, and someone needed to do something about it. And we were actually shocked and appalled that none of the condom companies were actively engaged um, in in the prevention of HIV and AIDS, um, at least not at a grassroots level and not in the community. Um, but, so but that's that sounds, exactly... Yeah, that's, but that sounds weird, though. You figure um, condom companies, they make condoms. So that would be their biggest you know, defense. It, hey, we, we make condoms. Try to prevent this. So it, what makes that, bee condoms different? You, you mentioned grassroots. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's exactly what I'll, I'll tell you. What makes us different is, number one, our mission um, to change, change the trajectory of HIV and AIDS in the most at-risk communities. We gauge ourselves by that. So in two years and five years and 10 years and 20 years, that's how we gauge the success of our company, not by profit margins, not by, you know, shareholder value. You know, our shareholder value is decreasing STI um, and HIV in, in our community. Secondly, our approach, we work directly with community organizations. Um, we work with basically a who's who in the prevention space all over the country. Um, we have a, you know, a partnership and programs in place with the Magic Johnson Foundation. Um, Google is actually 
one of our partners that helps us with our online strategy. Um, then we go into the actual nonprofits. Here in New York City, we work with the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS. We work with uh, Bronx AIDS Service. We work with um, Kings County Hospital, Harlem Hospital. We work with very small um, grassroots organizations like the Young Women of Color HIV AIDS Coalition, who we just did a, um, an event for a couple of weeks ago to raise awareness and really to bring highlight to a lot of the work that they're doing. Um, and what's happened, and then eventually what we do is we sell our line, the e-condoms line of condoms, and we reinvest uh, proceeds back into these community organizations. So it's really um, kind of social entrepreneurship yeah. uh, at its finest. Um, it's done from a public health and public awareness standpoint, yeah. um, and it's done in a community and grassroots um, approach. All right. So that pretty much explains what B condom is. It's something that's socially aware and trying to make a change in the communities. I guess this would be a perfect time to throw in a plug. Hey, get tested, everybody. Um, I got tested today, and I'm clean. <laughs> exactly, tested. and I will, I'll, I'll add to that. Um, Monday, June 27th yeah. is actually National HIV AIDS Testing Day. Mm -hmm. So that day is, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a huge day, and we want everyone to, to know their status. Um, uh, the, some of the bigger issues that, that, that's prevalent within the communities not that many people know their status. So yeah. you know, the CDC has all these figures, but there's a lot of people who are walking around who don't know their status. And the first um, way to help within prevention is to know your status. Know what so you are. On Monday, the 27th, um, you know, you, you'll see a lot of programs, especially from our end. We have a few events. We have, like, I think three events yeah. uh, that day, but we're working with the New York City Department of Health, yeah. um, also an event with DBT and a whole bunch of other people, and we're actually being honored at the event for the work that we're doing. So we're, we're looking forward to that event. That's great. All right, so now, okay, take me back to the beginning. We understand what you do. We want to yeah. understand now, how did you start? So right. you guys seem to have great jobs. Y'all yeah. were, were making good money. You were in corporate America, money. quote, unquote. Yeah. You, you were yeah. doing all right for yourselves. What made you take this risk? So take me back to that first conversation. Who came up sure. with the crazy idea of condoms? Again, that goes back to uh, you know Jason's mother, um, and then Jason himself kind of sat back and was thinking like, okay, how can we do this? And more importantly, you know, who can I do this with? He knew I had the finance and banking uh, background. Uh, he also knew that I had a few other entrepreneurial ventures that I had started. Um, one of them actually had been doing for a while, which was. Um, doing events here in New York City. I started off throwing parties, even That's while I was doing great. investment banking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting on just large-scale events that kind of took on their own, um, took on uh, its own life. And then I ventured and moved on from just, you know, party promoting to doing socially, con socially conscious events for fundraisers. So, okay. and that's where I was getting most of my joy from. So Jason took a step back and knew, knew that, hey, within healthcare, I have not only a good friend, but someone who has investment banking and finance background um, that we can launch a company together, someone who's launched a few ventures himself um, successfully, someone who's got a marketing experience, knows how to really brand a company. Um, I actually came up with the name B Condoms, um, and really quickly, just to give you a reason why we call ourselves B Condoms, is when we were trying to think of a name, we were, obviously were very community-oriented and community-focused, so we wanted a name that was very inclusive yeah. of everybody, so we thought, wow, you can really be, this can really be anything you want it to be. So we work with B condoms when we work with um, a lot of, you know, we work here with, with, with the churches. You know, we, when we work with them, we say be spiritual, but, but be safe. Yeah. We work with, you know, even um, committed couples and married couples. We say be committed, but be safe. Yeah. We work with the youth. We tell them, hey, be cool, you know, be, be, be yourself, but, 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 but be safe. So yeah. essentially, as long as you're being, you can be anything you want to be and be who you are as long as you do it in a safe manner. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to preach and spread safety and awareness. You know, we're not here to sell sex. One thing about our, our line is, is not about that. But anyways, really quick, getting back to the, um, the origins. Um, and then, you know, so like I said, you know, Jason understood that. So when Jason music. came to you, the idea flew yeah. with you? you? You were already down? You had you honestly, like, you know, a, when, Eureka, he, when he came to me, honestly, I thought we were going to start a nonprofit. Right. You know, um, which actually is one component of the business itself, too. We have uh, the Bee Holding Group, which is the parent company. That's who we distribute Bee condoms through. And then we have the Bee Foundation, and that's our nonprofit um, and partnership and social reinvestment tool. 
Um, he knew he knew that was my passion, so I actually run the B Foundation part of the business okay. in addition to doing all the finance and marketing for B okay. Condoms as a, as a brand. Um, he understood that Jason, I mean Ashanti, had the sales. Uh, technically, a um, a condom is a medical device, by the way. That is how we're classified with the FDA. So, you know, you have someone who has pharmaceutical sales and medical device sales experience in Ashanti, um, and then Jason had the legal and, you know, just the vision for the whole company. So he knew by combining all three, you know, skill sets and more importantly, friends, you know, guys who just always kept in contact and knew, you know, what we were doing, again, very successful in our own right and thought if we were really going to launch a successful minority owned and socially responsible kind of company that we had the skill set and wherewithal to make it happen because there's really too much on the line. Once you kind of step out and make it happen, you, you kind of have to be committed 100% um, and, you know, so trying to put our best guys, foot forward. Were you guys bootstrapped? Were you looking for investors for yeah. this? Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, completely bootstrapped. Um, you know, we were a fortunate enough position that we had uh, funds available um, between the co-founders to actually launch the brand um, from everything from um, getting the product to, you know, securing our manufacturing to flying back and forth to Malaysia, which is where our manufacturing is. Um, so we have a direct, you know, connect with our manufacturing, which is why we can compete on price with the big boys because, you know, we are here to, you know, to, to, to kind of not only be present, but but, but to gain a foothold in the U.S. market as well. Malaysia, um, wow. Yeah. How, how much How much were we talking? How, how much did you um, have I mean, to start initially, off? Initially, uh, initially, we started off with 50K. Um, it's kind of ballooned a little bit recently because we've, we've picked up a lot of steam. Um, so we're still um, self-funded, um, but we are at a point now where, you know, <laughs> it's interesting because now we're on the other side of the table where, you know, I've had businesses before where I've gone out and tried to fundraise, but now we're on the other side of the table where people are coming to us wanting to invest, and we're just having to sit back and analyze their proposals and figure out who we want to get involved with. Because you know, it's uh, you always have to make sure who you get in bed with. No, no, yeah. no pun intended. Be safe. Uh, <laughs> be safe. <laughs> but listen, um, a lot of my viewers are going to want to know how difficult was it for you to find a manufacturer, especially um, Malaysia. I really yeah. would like for you to speak about how did you go about finding them, and also sure. how did you come across the the cultural barrier of making a transaction like that with someone yeah. that's overseas. That, that, that's well, a I'm good sorry, can you give me one second? Somebody's like, oh, what's that? Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. To to so initially, there's there's only. Um, when we decided to go with our manufacturer, first, the quality was the mo most important thing to us. Definitely. Right? So it wasn't price. It wasn't, you know, even capacity, which is all very important things. But the first and foremost was price. So we went with the manufacturer that makes condoms for the United Nations. Right? A lot of people don't know that the, the UN has, you know, has, they have their own brand of condoms that they distribute to wherever the UN is. So we felt that they had the best quality. So that's the reason why we went with them. Okay. Um, so second, secondly, you know, all of this stuff has to be FDA certified. So we had to go through our, our own FDA certification process, but we also had to make sure that the factory was FDA certified. So that's kind of, you know, we put, we put, when you put all three things together, that's why we chose our manufacturer. Now, the second part of the question was cultural barriers. Um, interestingly enough, you know, being young black guys, um, when you're dealing with the international market, you'll be surprised. There is, uh, I think, what our our experience is that there was less stigma associated with us being young men of color, businessmen of color, than it would be in other parts of the states. Um, you know, we were, you know, at, at one point, you know, you're, you're dealing with dollars and cents. You know, you either have it or you don't. Yeah. Um, I would say that being American has helped. Um, when dealing with international, um, you know, whether it's manufacturing or just companies in general, um, everyone kind of wants to do a piece of the U.S. market. So yeah. um, our, our manufacturer was very interested in, 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 in working with us because of us and our story and what we potentially, you know, can, they saw the vision, you know, like when, when we 
presented to them and we said we wanted to go with them and we met all the, their requirements and they met all of our requirements, they also saw the larger vision of what the condoms is um, to the U.S. and potentially internationally. So it was just, it, it was a good marriage. But culturally, yeah, I mean, the Malaysians in general, just very easygoing people, um, didn't have as much, I, I think as young, you know, guys of color, sometimes we always assume like, okay, I'm the only black. And, you know, you're, when we travel, we're the only, you know, only black male sometime in the hotel or <laughs> definitely in the airport and this and that. So people are always wondering, like, what, what are you doing here? Like, they're just intrigued, you know, and you find out you have your own kind of line. They're like, whoa. Oh, man. <laughs> so how'd you get that? So that part, that part has, um, hasn't been that much of a barrier as, 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 we, as one would think. How many years have B condoms been around now? What year is this now? Fair, fair babies, man. This is year one. This is still year one. Wow. Year one, yeah. Well, that's why I couldn't we had our official launch. We had our official launch on uh, World AIDS Day, which is December first, uh, two thousand ten. So your so, first. So that means. So how long did it take for for you to launch? The trip to Malaysia came before the launching yeah. date. So it, how, because, how long was this in preparation? Yeah, from inception to where we are right now. It's not, it's almost a year. Wow. So you're talking about last July, um, uh, July August, we got everything up and running. By December, we had product, we had launched. Um, by January, the press, we were out, um, and now we're here in Harlem. Uh, that's where we're, we're located. We have uh, office space. We have staff, about seven people, uh, not including the co-founders and head of sales. So. It's 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 been exponential growth, man. We've, Wait, we've been very blessed. Let, let me truly understand this. Let me understand what you're saying. So you mean to tell me in July, uh, Jason's mom mentioned something about condoms. Jason said, hey, yeah. we have a good idea. Let's make some condoms." You guys were able to get fifty thousand dollars bootstrap together and say, "Let's do it." When yeah. did you take your first trip to Malaysia? Um, that was um, before is that, is that October. Let me say October. Over November, um, it was like a, a month or so before our um, before our uh, before our launch party, so and then recent we recently went again in May. So um, five that was after the inception. You hop on the plane. You say, "Yo, we have a manufacturer. Let's go find them. Let's go build this face to face relationship, and let's get a product done." Yeah, we you know we're we're all in. You know, we that's one thing for your viewers and entrepreneurs in general is that you have to be decisive and you have to move quick. Um, you know, you can't sit around and wait for, you know, everyone has great ideas. I've had other great ideas that I've never acted on. Yeah. You know, but at a certain point, you have to act on it. It's not for the faint of heart. It's, uh, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of faith. Um, and you just have to, you just have to do it. I mean, it's, 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 it's very, it, it's, um, it's not for everybody, you know. I would say, you know, like, you know, it's what, there's nothing safe like, about it. I feel like I'm missing out on something here. So in July, were were you all still working at your respective jobs, your careers? Yeah, uh, Jason. At, no, at, at that point, Jason was leaving. Um, he did law. two weeks. He just said, "You know what?" <laughs> he was just like, "This is this is not for me anymore." Yeah. Um, I had already left corporate America uh, two years prior. Um, and I was working on um, on another startup that I had. It was a, an online company, um, which I'm still involved in. But when this thing took off, I just had to take a back seat um, because you know this is 24/7 right now. I mean, when you see the everything happening such a short timeline, it's really because we're working oh, just that many nice hours. Yeah, well. and and now we're blessed to have a staff which. We can, you know, not only pass off work, but we can pick up additional yeah. work, and it allows, you know, co-founders to be out there. Um, we've, we've been doing a lot of speaking engagements. We've been asked to come to speak to a lot of colleges and universities. Um, we spoke at Morehouse, our alma mater, on social entrepreneurship. Um, we spoke at USC in LA. Um, we spoke at um, Johns Hopkins most uh, recently. Um, so, you know, so on and so forth. We have um, a lot of events. We have this um, huge tour. That we're working on this fall. It's a 30 stop HBCU tour, health and wellness um, tour. It's called the Be Healthy Tour. We're stopping by nine homecomings and classics, and then another additional um, stops in between. So we, we got a lot going on, man. We're, right. we're just getting started.
this is great. Uh, can we talk a little bit about um, revenues? Are, are y'all making profit? I'm assuming. Yeah. You know. No, no. We have what happened is we got our first initial um, uh, product, and with that, we did a lot of promotional stuff. Okay. You know, obviously, this summer, um, our huge container <laughs> worth of condoms, which is you know in the millions, comes in, um, and that's what we are currently. Um, selling to people, you know, to, to, and what we do is we work a lot with um, st uh, state and local uh, and, and local agencies, you know, people don't, people don't realize that, you know, condoms, it's not just the retail side of the market, the, you know, the Rite Aids and the CVSs and the Walgreens, but you also have cities and states that purchase um, condoms, so well, a lot of York, our... So you're familiar with, um, not to plug anybody else, but the NYC condom. Yeah, that yeah, so that, 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 that I'm glad you brought that up because um, New York City has the New York City branded condom. That's the um, subway map ones. And they also have an alternative um, condom program, which is the city buys it and distributes it to all anyone, all of their eight organizations. And we are, what we're doing is we're applying and vying for a lot of these contracts as well. So we're very entrenched uh, since we are in the public and nonprofit space. Excuse me, we're also very entrenched. On the, on the on on the government side of procurement and um, and buying of condoms, so that's 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 kind of where that's kind of where we're heading, and, and that's kind of where we're spending a lot of our time and focus currently before we get to retail. Now, obviously, retail is is the big is, is the big uh, is the big boys. You know, that's where the big boys are, and, and and that's where we're headed. And you know, we we thought, hey, let's just do the government side for a little bit and then build up steam to get there but everything's happening so rapidly that we're currently you know looking at distribution deals for retail so everything is just happening really fast and at a rapid pace and we're just working hard to keep up you spoke on this briefly um earlier you said um entrepreneurial shit this is not for everybody this is for the no. this is not for the faint of heart and on uh, my viewers, we're a college student. I'm a, currently a college student, and I, I know a lot of the other viewers that are going to be watching this program. They're still in college or they're fresh out of college. Explain okay. exactly, if you can, in a little more detail, what separates an entrepreneur from the average person? Yeah. You know, it, I, in, in, one, in one word, it's risk, risk, risk tolerance. That's really what it comes down to is, you know, are you able to, it's like a poker player, right? Like who, who can go all in yeah. versus who can just hedge and drop a few chips on the table? Yeah. You know, that's, that's, entre that's entrepreneurship to me, you know? Um, and, 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 and not to say that, I don't want to belittle it, I'm just saying you take a risk you, and you do it, but a lot of it is calculated risk too. You know? I mean, you know, we have almost, you know, 25 years of experience between us three. So it's not like we came out of college and just said, hey, we're going to launch this. Could it have been done? Possibly, I think it would be a lot harder, you know, I think when people meet us and, you know, they understand our, our backgrounds, our, our history, and we're still considered very young, by the way, we're all 31 years old, actually, so in our space, we're considered very young, but, you know, we're almost 10 years out of college, so we did gain a lot of professional experience, you know, I, if Jason was actually here right now, he's a little bit more of a rebel, you know, he would probably tell the college students who are watching, to just do it, you know. I myself, I'm actually very appreciative of the of my time in investment banking. I learned a lot. Yeah. I made a lot of great contacts. You know, I appreciate my time throwing parties. I mean, I know so many people in New York City just from, you know, doing events and networking. So, you know, when 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 I come into a new business, I, I'm bringing all that with me too. You all know, so it's not to take away, you know, all all of the other ventures that we've had. Actually, the unsuccessful ventures. I, that's one thing I will say. You have to go out there and try stuff because our failed ventures, Jason also had another uh, venture that didn't really go anywhere, but we learned so much from that. You know, um, the fact that we had online ventures, you know, gave us a really good sense of, of how e-commerce works, how building websites are, who to go to, designers, at what rate, at what price, you know, like all of that comes into play. So if I'm speaking to a college student, which we do a lot on the speaking tour, I'm still an advocate of, you know, going, learning on somebody else's dime, you know, getting a job with whoever it is 
and learning. The end goal for me, when I was sitting at Morgan Stanley doing investment banking, the end goal was never to be a managing director at into the corner office. The end job was always to be doing something. What that something was, I didn't know. You know, did I think it would be condoms? Definitely not. No idea. You know, you know, did I think it would be something that would be uh, socially conscious? Yes. You know, did I understand that it would be tackling HIV and AIDS and what's happening now, the fact that it's more of an issue in 2011 than it was in 94, than it was in 85, you know? I didn't know that. But again, that's that, that that's our call to action. So, um, you know, listen, entrepreneurs are all over college campuses. They're, they're the guys that throw the parties. They're the guys that put together the events. They're the guys who bring in concerts and acts. You know, they're the... They're the girls who are selling, you know, uh, t-shirt lines. They're the ones doing, you know, fashion shows. You know, these are all entrepreneurial people, you know. And it's interesting enough, now looking back being 10 years out, as I look around, I think about it, I'm like, wow, these people have always been doing entrepreneurial ventures, you know. Um, a lot of people talk about being entrepreneurs, but... You know, I don't I actually don't even to use that word that much, I and mean, that's not talking about it in a social setting because, you know, I, we're just about less talk and more action. You know, it's like don't don't speak about it, be about it. That's that's great advice. That's great advice to me and to the audience. Did we leave anything out? Um, you know what? I I will say just you know um, about the condoms. You know, if you. Any of your viewers are listening and they want, you know, be condoms. We're we're doing a campus rep program okay. where we are looking for representatives, college campuses all over the country. We listed it on idealist.com. So if you go to idealist.com and look up the be condoms um, college uh, rep program, we have our HBCU tour that's kicking off on um, September 3rd um, in Virginia for, at Norfolk State versus Virginia State. Heading over to uh, DC for the Nation's Classic, which is Howard versus Morehouse, um, and then continue on. So just be on the lookout for us. Go to the website, becondoms.com. Follow us on Twitter. Everything is becondoms. So at becondoms, Tumblr, becondoms. Uh, we, we use social media a lot to engage, um, specifically the youth, and we're very open. I mean, if you drop us a line, get an answer from Jason or, or myself. Um, so anyone who just wants to help push the, uh, the message forward, whether it's coming to your campus to speak, whether it's being a college rep, whether it's getting your um, college or university to, to purchase and carry a socially responsible condom line, knowing that proceeds will be reinvested back into local AIDS organizations, um, that's that 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 would that helps further push along our message. Yeah, man, that's great. So we're definitely going to do that, everybody. This is B Condoms with Elke Bala. Thanks a lot, Elke. That's right.